This is a short tutorial on how to take photos of your two-dimensional artwork. It's presented to you on the Arts League of Lowell YouTube channel. This assumes that you will use your phone or tablet to take the photo rather than a camera. Using a camera involves a lot more complicated editing. This tutorial is for artists who need a good photo of their art to submit for an art call. Or maybe you just want a good photo to share on your Facebook page. For an art call, a good photo could be the difference between acceptance or rejection for some exhibits. Also, galleries, including the Arts League of Lowell, like to use the submitted photos to promote a show. That includes posts on Facebook and Instagram during the show. I'm going to show you how to make a photo that is good for all of those purposes. I'll be doing this tutorial using my iPhone 14. You can also use an iPad. You can use an Android phone or tablet. You will find that the tools for taking photos and editing are similar on Android devices. Now, I recommend taking photos of your art before framing, especially for work such as pastels or charcoals that will have a pane of clear glass or acrylic in front of the art. That clear pane will cause, uh, will make, will cause uh, reflections and make taking the photo more difficult. Later, I'll show you how to take photos of art that has a reflective paint in front of it. Just be forewarned that the setup is more complicated than it is for a piece that does not have a paint in front of it. I like to think of taking a photo of art in three steps. The steps are setting up, taking the photo, and editing. In editing, I want to assure you that before I, before I go on, that editing is not very technical. It's not nearly as difficult as using Photoshop or Lightroom. The editing tools on your phone or tablet are much easier to use. On the iPhone or iPad, you use sliders to make the adjustments. Now we'll get to that later. So now, setting up to take the photo. You need light, and the kind of light is not as important as the intensity or brightness. In other words, it can be fluorescent, incandescent, or LED. Doesn't matter. The light in the room needs to be bright enough that your phone flash isn't needed. You don't want to use your phone flash because it will call, cause bright spots or flares on the photo. The source of light should not be behind you. If it is, you will cast your shadow on the art. If your room has windows, keep them off to the sides when you take the photo. Avoid direct light. Overhead lights such as ceiling can lights work great. Diffuse light from lamps with shades work fine. It helps to be in a sunny room because the sunlight will add a little more light. If you have a bright studio, you may not need any artificial light at all. You can put the art on an easel or prop it up on a table. You may need to adjust the position to avoid glare. I'll show you how that can work in a minute. With that, I'm going to move on to the process of taking the photo. I'll show you how to set up for reflective panes of glass or acrylic later after I discuss editing. To take the photo, you want to stand in front of the art and hold your phone facing it as at roughly the middle of the art to start. Stand back as far as practical. I took this photo from about one foot away. My iPhone had a 1x magnification. Taking the photo from a distance will give you a better photo with less distortion. You want, a you want a magnification greater than 1x if your phone can do that. Fill the frame of the photo with the art. Include as much of the art as you can in the photo. Take several photos so that you can select the best for editing. Try moving the phone around to see if, there are, if, if you're getting glare. Depending on the medium, your art may pick up light glare from some angles. Try to minimize this by turning or tilting the art. You can also try changing the angle of your phone. You can hold it higher, lower, to the left, or to the right. In this video, you can see the effects of changing phone, phone angle. As I move my phone, you can see the light flare on the oil painting. The flare goes away at some angles. 
These kinds of effects will differ depending on the medium and your particular lighting. This is a good example of how reflections, glare, or light flares affect color. The colors are best when lighting is even. Notice that the art has a perspective distortion. We'll take care of that in editing. When you take the photo, the most important thing is to get the lighting right. The next step is editing. There are quite a few things that you can fix by editing on the phone. I recommend sticking with perspective corrections and cropping. When I show my iPhone during editing, you will not see my finger because you're only seeing a mirror of my screen on the display. I'll take it slow so that you can see the selections and the slider movement. Perspective corrections are done with the cropping tool on the iPhone. You will almost always need to do these corrections because of the angles you need to use to get rid of flares and light glare. The goal is to have all four sides of the art parallel to the top, bottom, and sides of the photo frame. You only need to get it close, not perfect. The straighten tool is used to rotate the image in the photo. You may need to move back and forth among the straighten, vertical, and horizontal sliders to align the edges of your art. The vertical and horizontal sliders can correct perspective. Let's try the vertical slider first. You can tilt the subject forward and back using the vertical slider. This is used to make the sides parallel. Next, let's try the horizontal slider. You can turn the subject to the left or to the right like this using the horizontal slider. This is used to make the top and bottom parallel. Now that the sides of the art are parallel, it's time to crop. When cropping, you will get the best results if you don't try to include the mat or frame. You'll find it difficult to make the frame and mat look even all the way around. A handheld is just not precise enough to do that kind of editing. When you crop the edges of the art itself, you may cut off a bit of the art. That little sliver is not going to make a difference. You won't notice it. Maybe it's better to say that you may notice it, but the people who look at the photo will not. The purpose of editing, editing, is to, is, editing the photo is to get a good representation of your art. The main composition elements are probably not around the edges. The automatic white balance and exposure settings of your phone should give you good color accuracy and brightness. If the colors seem off, the first thing to try is the warmth slider. One direction makes the colors warmer and the other colder. This compensates for lighting effects. Your colors may be too warm because of incandescent lighting. They may be too cold because of fluorescent lighting. Brightness or darkness can be adjusted with the exposure slider. The exposure slider is kind of self-explanatory. One direction increases exposure and the other decreases exposure. There are other edits that you can do. You can adjust saturation, vibrance, and tint, for example. Personally, I think those are overkill because you're taking photos of your art under controlled conditions. You're setting everything up to be pretty much perfect for the photo. Too many changes to the photo could have the risk of making the photo a lot different than the art. You want your photo to come as close as possible to matching the colors of your art and what a person would see if they're seeing it in real life. This is the final result of editing the oil painting. It is an untitled work by British artist Mark William Lang Lewis, who lived from 1848 to 1924. The beautiful colors that you see were restored by the late Peter Kostalakis, who many of you may have known. This is pretty much all you need to do to get a good photo of your art. Now let's turn to the problem of taking a photo of art covered by a pane of glass or acrylic. In this case, you need to experiment to determine what will work for you. I don't think there is a perfect solution. To begin with, you can correct for light reflections by moving the art until the reflections go away, tilting it, tipping it. You can also have an assistant hold a sheet of foam core or mat behind, over to the sides to block troublesome light sources. 
To see the reflections correctly, you need to be in the position where you will take the photo. Now, once you've solved the light reflections, you will find that the paint still acts like a mirror. It will reflect, it will reflect you and everything around you. The reflections may be hard to see, but they will affect your photo. In the worst case, you will see yourself with your phone in front of your face taking the photo. The mirror effect is probably worse if the art has dark colors. To solve the mirror reflection problem, I use a sheet of black muslin. You can get a sheet like this on Amazon for about $10. You can use any kind of non-reflective black material. It doesn't need to be cloth. You can use paper. It does need to be wide enough to block reflections at the sides of the art. Lay it on the floor in front of the art. It must rise up high enough in front of you to block your reflection. I use a small table to raise it up. Your vantage point to take the photo will be behind the table facing the art with the phone held close to the tabletop. From that vantage point, you want to check for reflections. You may need to tilt the top of the art forward a bit to eliminate remaining reflections along the top edge. It will take some practice to get this right. Sometimes it helps to have an assistant to tilt the art and hold it in position. You want to minimize the shadows that the frame casts on the mat. You will not be able to entirely get rid of those shadows. Take the photo and go to the editing step. This is the serigraph that I photographed. All I did to edit was straighten, correct for perspective, and crop. This is the final result. By the way, the print is titled Mahone Bay by Joy Laking. We bought it when we visited her studio in Nova Scotia a few years ago. Well, that's it. You should be able to take good photos of your art by following these steps. The features of your phone or tablet really work well for this, for this purpose. Your phone or tablet will dis display consistently good color and editing tools are easy to use with a little practice. That's all for now. Best of luck with your art artistic pursuits. Thank you for watching.